Looking at the benchmarks, in Geekbench, the MacBook Pro was twice as fast as single core and 30% faster in multi-core operations. In Cinebench, the MacBook Pro was also faster than its eight-year-old brother. In Final Cut Pro, when playing back H.264, the Mac Pro performed just as badly as the iMac Pro, with clear advantages provided by the MacBook Pro's 2018 chipset. However, when it came down to a graphics intensive render, the Mac Pro with RX 580 graphics performed 45% faster. But for CPU intensive tasks, such as compiling code, the MacBook Pro was 30% faster. That being said, nothing could touch the Mac Pro when it came down to the noise levels. No matter what I throw it, it was silent. And for comparison, this is how the Synology is sounding. Now, I originally bought a Mac Pro because I wasn't happy with the performance of the 2017 MacBooks and I wasn't happy with the iMac Pro. It didn't handle H.264 well and that's, that's what I record stuff in. I record it in that format. It has to do it in software, whereas these Intels, the latest ones, they can do it on the CPU. To be honest with you, the classic Mac Pro was a powerful beast as it is. I mean, playing games, RX 580 graphics, 32GB RAM, everything was smooth and butter, even Photoshop. But when it comes to transcoding videos, it was a pain. Just video encoding was slower than even my 2016 MacBook Pro. Rendering out, using the editor was fast, it's just with the encoding, and I can't do anything about that. It's just the limitation of the chips. So that's why I had to upgrade. But for value, my Mac Pro, after I upgraded it, cost me about 1,500. This MacBook Pro, the cheapest you can get it, the 15 inch, is $3,500. So you're making a big savings if you're willing to carry the risk of damaging that Mac Pro. Because the thing is, with a new MacBook, you're gonna get a warranty, you're gonna get the option of an extended warranty or accidental damage, all that kind of good stuff. Whereas with uh, a Mac Pro, a second-hand one, you damage it, it's on you.